English Dark Mild, or just English Mild, is by every category a light beer. It's light on the palate, light in bitterness, and light in alcohol. Every category except colour, that is. This is effectively an easy drinking session beer that happens to be dark. And that makes it an interesting beer to brew up. And while I'm brewing it, we're going to take a look at measuring gravity. I'm Martin Keane, I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. Today is dark mild. This is a beer that you can just drink a ton of because it's nice and low alcohol. And it's also something that is ready fast. You can go from grain to glass in uh, a couple of weeks with this one. And that's because of its low gravity. So this beer is going to have an original gravity of 1037. That's probably about the lowest that I have done on my homebrew challenge. So as far as ingredients go, it's an English beer, so we do want that slight toasty flavor to it, which we'll get from our old friend Maris Otter. 79% of the grist is gonna be made up of Maris Otter. Now for the specialty grains, here we want to add some of that dark color that we're expecting from a dark mild, but we really want to be careful not to go overboard with roasted malts and really blow this out and make it like a, a porter or something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use 7% each of amber malt, brown malt, and pale chocolate malt. That should give us an SRM of about 17. You could go a bit darker as well if you like. The star guidelines allow you to go all the way up to an SRM of 25. Now, a long time ago when I first started making these homebrew challenge videos, I would occasionally meet with professional brewers and taste some of their beers so I could get an idea for what a particular style should taste like. Well, I met Whit Baker, from Bond Brothers many months ago when we were tasting some beers that I was doing at the start of the challenge, but Wit had a dark mild that he was really excited for me to try. So even though it was months away from me getting as far as brewing that beer, we still had a little taste. You know, this one's gonna go out like three months. Oh, it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> I just know we have a good mile, and I was like, hey, you should do No, this. it's yeah. just like, oh, I'm back here at, at Bob yeah. Brothers. Again, like, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So here I am back at Bob Brothers with, with Baker, and uh, we are drinking a, a, an English mild. What, what is this one called? So this is called Small Malty, um, and it's literally a small in that low alcohol, uh, it's three and a half percent, uh, and malty in that there's like basically 10 IBUs in this beer. This is a very... British tasting beer, mm -hmm. brewed in a very non-British way, you were telling me. Totally, yeah. So this beer, what we did was we wanted to make a full flavored session beer, um, which requires kind of different tactics than like a, a high alcohol beer. So one thing we did was we mashed up at 170. Um, if you kind of look at brewing textbooks, they say like 154, 156 is, the, is kind of the highest. So mashing at 170, we're cutting those enzyme, or the enzyme potential of the barley short, uh, leaving more dextrins behind. This is very English. It's very English. Despite yeah, yeah, the yeah. crazy way that you brew it. So right, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of people have asked me what water filter I use on my brew day, and honestly, I can never remember. It's something I bought years ago. But I figured because it was years ago, it was probably time to get a new one. So I looked it up and uh, this is what I got. So this is just a RV water filter. And the reason I use it is obviously just to filter the tap water that I'm using so I don't have to use distilled water or something like that. And specifically, it gets rid of chlorine, which is really something you don't want in your beer. And just to test this filter, I filled up this glass of water with the old filter and then this one with the new one. And uh, I've got a, a TDS meter here, a total dissolved solids meter. Actually, they ended up reading about the same. In fact, the newer filter had a slightly higher reading, but anything under 200 is better than tap water. And I think the real test is in the taste. And uh, when I taste this one, there's um, definitely a bit of a plasticky off taste to it, just, just a little bit. Uh, whereas this new filter, 
tastes much cleaner. And it really does make sense that if the water tastes better, then surely that's going to translate into the beer too. I'm going to mash this guy at 152 Fahrenheit, my usual mash temperature, for about 60 minutes. So let's talk then about gravity and the first stage that I start to care about the gravity of my beer is during the mash. And I'm going to take a gravity reading during the mash using an old favourite, this is a hydrometer. And uh, I also went out and purchased a new test jar for the occasion today because my old one's all cracked. Now, why take a gravity reading during the mash? Well, it's known as the pre-boil gravity reading, and it's a number that effectively helps you know when the mash is done. So instead of blindly mashing for 60 minutes, because one hour is a nice round number, we can actually apply a bit more science to it than that, and take a gravity reading and cut the mash off once we know that we've reached that pre-boil gravity amount. Now I know in Beersmith that I'm expecting a pre-boil gravity for my batch size of 1.025. I've taken a sample of the wort just from out of the kettle here and now I need to see what the gravity rating is. Now I can't just drop my hydrometer in here and get a accurate rating because this thing is calibrated at 68 Fahrenheit. So any warmer or colder than that, then you actually need to do a calculation to figure out what your real gravity actually is. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my thermometer and take a reading of how warm this is. It's 146. Then I'm going to put my hydrometer in here to get a unadjusted, uncalibrated gravity reading. And that looks to be about 10. Now I'm going to use Beersmith to figure out what my actual pre-boil gravity is at this point. So in Beersmith under tools there is this hydrometer setting here and we enter in our measured gravity and our temperature. So our measured gravity was 10, our temperature was 146 and that will tell us that our corrected gravity is 1027. Now 1027 is actually slightly above my pre-boil expected gravity of 1025. So basically it's telling me the mash is done and I'm only 30 minutes in. So Really, I've got all of the sugars that I'm going to extract out of this grain at this point. No point continuing to mash. I can move on to the next stage and get an early start on the boil. The hops for this beer come exclusively from bittering hops, so we're only going to put something in right at the start of the boil. I am using East Kent Golding Hops and I'm adding enough of these in to get me to 22 IBU. With the boil done and the beer transferred into the fermenter, I can now take a gravity sample again. This will be my original gravity number. Now the final gravity reading has come out around 10.42. There's no adjustments needed this time because the beer is at 68 Fahrenheit. 10.42 is a few points over what I was aiming for. I was aiming for 10.37, but I have noticed that when you brew beers that are of a lower gravity, then the beer system tends to be a little bit more efficient. So perhaps I should have accounted for that in my recipe. Either way, I'm sure this is gonna turn out fine. Now as for the yeast that's going to go in this beer, that is WLP002 English Ale Yeast. Now this is a flocculent yeast and just take a look at how lumpy and flocculent this thing looks. Now another way I keep track of gravity is when the beer is in the fermenter, I can track it as it's fermenting and to do that I use a, a little gadget called a tilt. This is what one of these tilts looks like. Now I've talked about these on the channel before. I do use them pretty much with every brew. So how this works is you drop this in your beer and then it sends a Bluetooth signal out 
with a gravity reading and a temperature reading, which you can receive on the Tilt app on your phone. So that allows you to see the gravity drop as the beer is fermenting, and it can tell you when the beer is finished fermenting because that gravity number is not dropping anymore. So it's just another cool data point to have. Now, one of the things to be aware of when you're using a Tilt is, first of all, to make sure that it's calibrated properly. So I've put two of my tilts in a jar of water. Why water? Well, water has a gravity of one. So this is a great way to calibrate these guys. Now if I launch the app, we can see the gravity readings that we're getting from these two tilts. There's an uncalibrated gravity reading and a calibrated gravity reading and also a temperature. Now I recommend putting the tilts in the water and leaving them there for a little while because the temperature adjustment does take a while. So if you put this in really cold water, like in a lager, it's gonna take a while for that temperature to drop down to that lager temperature. So put it in some water, leave it there for a little while and then come back and perform the calibration. To perform the calibration, you click on the little gear icon up here, pick the tilt that you want to calibrate, let's say the red one, and then move down and select calibrate in water. That will set the gravity then to 1.0. So you can see here that both of my tilts now have a calibrated gravity of 1.0 and that means they're good to go. Now I've sanitized my tilt and I'm gonna drop that in too. So the beer is now in the fermentation chamber 68 Fahrenheit and I will be tracking its fermentation down to final gravity using the tilt. And that gravity came out as 1012. That is a 4% beer, so quite a light one. I have Lauren here to taste it with me. Hi. If you're interested in brewing this one yourself, the recipe kit for this in both all grain and um, in extract form is available at Atlantic Brew Supply. Okay, now Lauren, I uh, have to admit I did take a sneaky taste of this one already. I can see that. Yes, but okay, let's let's see what we think about the, the look, the color of this one. Okay, so it's a bit dark on the dark side. Um, it's quite a like a mahogany looking color. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you hold it right up to the light, it's not as dark as it initially looks. Um, quite a yeah, nice dark mahogany color. That's a good descriptor. Yep. Okay, and for smell now, without even putting my nose to the glass, I can already get a bit of the aroma. Quite strong. It it smells like kind of yeasty. Yeah, and I think uh, quite a strong multi profile on this beer. Multi, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. But it also, um, to me, it smells quite sweet as well. It's like, yeah. Yes. It's a bit sweet. Yeah, yeah. It definitely a uh, bit of a British pub kind of smell to it. Very malty, a bit sweet. You can sort of smell some of those darker malts in there. Yeah, looking forward to uh, trying some more of this one. <laughs> okay, let's go in for the taste. So, what do you think? Well, I think. Um, I think it's actually pretty damn good. It's it's uh, the the taste for this is supposed to be looks like a dark beer, kind of tastes a bit like a light beer or mm. a sort of a more English style bitter or something like that. I think it nails it. What do you think? I would agree with that. Like it looks like it would taste a lot more heavy than it actually does taste. Yeah, and at four percent, this is actually a really sessionable beer. This yeah. is something you can um, to drink in quantity. Yeah, you can drink in proper. 20 ounce English pints. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, certainly something worth trying and I think if you're looking for a nice kind of easy drinking beer with a bit of real malt character, it's a good choice, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like it. It's very good. You look like you're about to burp. Nope. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Good. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>